Hey YouTube, today I'm going to be adding authentication to a Node.js API using AWS Cognito. AWS Cognito is a managed authentication provider in AWS. We're going to start by setting up and configuring a Cognito user pool, and then we're going to create a piece of authentication middleware that authenticates a post request into our API against the users in Cognito. All right, let's get started. Inside the AWS Management Console, let's go to Cognito by clicking on Services. And under Security, Identity, and Compliance, click on Cognito. For our application, we need to create a user pool, so click on Manage User Pools. In the upper right-hand corner, click Create a User Pool. And let's name this user pool Node.js API User Pool. We can click on Review Defaults since we're going to leave everything else as is, and click Create the Pool. Okay, so now that our pool is created, we're actually going to grab this pool ID and we're going to add a new environment variable since we're going to need to use this for the middleware that authenticates against Cognito. So copy that, head over to VS Code, inside of our .env file. Let's add a new line here and name our environment variable Cognito user pool ID. Paste in our user pool ID and save this. And let's head back over to AWS. Now we need to add an app client. On the left-hand side, click on App Clients, and then add an app client. This is going to identify our API as the application that is attempting to authenticate using this user pool. So type in Node.js API, then click on Create App Client. And we're going to need this app client ID. So I'm going to copy this, go back to VS Code, I'm just going to create a new temporary file, paste that in there for later reference. Okay, so on the left-hand side, let's go to App Client Settings to add some further configuration to this. Now we need to configure the identity provider, so let's check Cognito User Pool. Let's set a callback URL to HTTP colon slash slash localhost. Should get a warning that localhost is only used for local development. We want to next check the implicit grant OAuth flow. And we're going to check email and open ID for our scopes. And finally, click on Save Changes. Okay, next on the left-hand side, we need to go to Domain Name. And we're going to give our cog Cognito domain name a prefix here. So we can say Node.js API 1234 to keep it something unique. Click Check Availability. It says this domain is available, so Save Changes. So this is the base URL that we're going to need to create our sign-in URL. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to copy the end part here. And let's go back into VS Code to take a note of this. HTTPS colon slash slash node at JS API 1234. And we will save that there for later reference. Okay, and the last thing we need to do here is create a user just so we can test the sign in. Let's click create user. Say Node.js API user at bmorrison.dev, although you can create whatever username you want. I'm not going to send an invitation. I'm going to create a temporary password. And we will set an email address of Node.js API user at bmorrison.dev. For the sake of testing, it's important to make sure the mark email as verified is checked. Otherwise, it will make you actually verify your email address. But I'm going to uncheck mark phone number is verified. Click Create User. Now let's head back into VS Code. So now we're going to use this URL, and we're going to craft a URL that we can use to sign into Cognito that informs it what client we're trying to sign in as. So after the AmazonCognito.com, Let's put forward slash OAuth2 forward slash authorize. So we need to add some query parameters here. So I'm going to add a new line just to keep things organized. And we'll say response type underscore type equals token. And client underscore ID is equal to our client ID that we saved up here. And then finally, redirect underscore URI equals HTTP colon slash slash localhost. Let's get rid of all our extra spacing we have here. And this is the URL we should be able to use to sign into Cognito. So we're going to copy that, head over into Chrome, create a new tab, and paste our URL in here. 
We're presented with a sign-on page. Cognito creates these sign-on pages for you automatically just by using its service. Let's sign in here. We said no JS API user at vmorrison.dev and put my temporary password in. Now, because the status is forced change password, it's going to make me set a new password. You can see it automatically has some password complexity and requirements that it checks. Go ahead and click send. Now, even though you end up on this page, you might think you did something wrong, but you didn't. If you look at the URL up here, you can see we have an ID token along with a giant string after that. I'm going to copy this out. We're going to go back into VS Code, and we're actually going to paste this. So now, if I look for everywhere where the, one of these ampersands or question mark is, we can split this URL up, and you can see there is quite a bit of data inside of this URL. So, and the last thing I need to find is an ampersand, which is right there. Let's go ahead and click there. Escape that down as well. And the last thing is our ID token. So I'm going to turn on word wrap here for a little bit. And now you can see here is an ID token. Here is an access token. The access token being what we're actually going to use to authenticate our API. And then an expiration date. This is 3600, which is an hour. And then the token type, which is bearer. Okay, so now that we have our access token that we're going to use to sign in, we're going to head back into our main project, open a terminal, and we need to install yet another package. NPM install Cognito Express, Cognito hyphen Express. Cognito Express is a piece of middleware that's used to pass authentication into AWS. Okay, once that's installed, you can close the terminal. So now we're going to add a piece of authentication middleware. Uh, let's go ahead and create a new file right in the root of our project and name this auth.js. Okay, first thing, let's import our library. const Cognito Express equals require. Cognito Express. Now we need to create a new Cognito Express object, which has all of our settings in here. So const Cognito Express equals new Cognito Express. And we're going to pass in our options as an object here. We'll say the region is process.env.aws underscore default underscore region. We'll pass in our user pool ID, so cognito user pool ID, process.env.cognito user underscore pool underscore ID. Our token use, which is going to be of type access. And finally, our token expiration, which is going to be 3600, just like we pulled from the URL earlier. Now we need to export a function called validate auth, which is going to be used as the middleware. So exports dot validate auth equals the request, the response, and then a new parameter of next. Every time you're creating a piece of express middleware, you have to call next so it moves on to the next piece of middleware or into the main part of the request handler. So traditionally, authentication tokens are passed in the authorization header with a type of bearer and then the token to follow as the value. So we need to check first to make sure that exists. So if request.headers.authorization and request.headers.authorization.split And we're going to split the string based on a space and then grab the first element of that. And we're going to check to see if that equals bearer, which is the type of token we need to be passing in. Inside here, we can handle the main portion of our authentication checks. But I'm going to add an else statement on the end here and say that if these checks don't pass, we're going to say response.status. And we're just going to pass 401 and then send with an empty body. Response 401 maps to the unauthorized response. 
Okay, so now we need to grab the token from that authorization header. So const token equals request dot headers dot authorization dot split. Just like we did earlier, except for grabbing the first element, we're going to grab the second element by passing one. And then cognito express dot validate. We're going to pass in our token. This accepts a callback function, so we're going to say error, pass that into another error function. Fix our close parens there. And we'll say if error, we will just simply response.status.401 and then send it with an empty body. Else we want to do next, which is going to pass on to the next portion, basically indicating to express that the authorization passed. So let's head back over to our books. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up our handlers so this way the git can be accessed by essentially anybody. But in order to save a book into our API, you're going to need to be authorized to do so. So up towards the top where we've been importing all of our libraries, let's import that component that we just exported. So validate auth and we'll equals require relative pass to our auth.js file. And now we can use this validate auth component to do just that. We're inside of our post, since we don't want to eliminate our post book validators, we can actually open an array here, pass and validate auth, add a comma there, and then we're going to use the spread operator to essentially take all of the validators as the array and map them directly into this array. Let's go ahead and click save, open terminal, npm run dev to start our API. Okay, so back in Postman, let's update some of our variables here just to make sure that we have a good book that we're sending back. Change this to some random numbers here to make sure that we don't have any conflicts and let's go ahead and click send. Now, since I did not pass any kind of authorization header in here, we should receive a 401 unauthorized, which is exactly what we received. Now to add the header here, let's go ahead to the authorization tab, drop this down and click on bearer token. And we're gonna paste in our access token that we received from Cognito earlier. Let's grab that from VS Code, copy our value, head back into Postman and paste our token in. Now I wanna demonstrate if I head over to headers, you can see Postman added the authorization header and a value of bearer space and then the token, which is exactly what we are checking inside of our middleware. So now let's go ahead and send this. Oh, looks like it doesn't like the fact that a rating is missing. So let's add a rating back in there. And let's try one more time, send it. And it was created. I had to change the ISBN again because by a bad stroke of luck, I happened to type an ISBN that already existed. But now that we have set up our data model properly, you can see we now have a 201 created status. And even if I come into the authorization and I change this token ever so slightly, so say one character, we'll change this one to a two and click send. We now get an unauthorized because that token is no longer valid. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor, like, subscribe, and share the video. I'm also live right here on YouTube every Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Central. For channel updates or to get in touch with me, follow me on Twitter at BrianMMDev or join my Discord using the link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.